Hi everyone, my name is Ricardo and we're going to talk about how to remove this feather touch focuser from your 11 inch Rasa or any Celestron SCT for that matter. I'm also going to go over how to install the focus motor on your SCT as well. So if you're not interested in that part, you can just stop watching after we remove the focuser. Okay, so now with the introductions out of the way, let's talk about why you would want to take one of these off your, your telescope. So first off, I want to say that if you're planning on focusing manually, that this is definitely the way to go. The, the stock focuser is sorely lacking in precision and, and as a general rule, the longer focal length instrument you have, the more sensitive it is to vibrations and all SETs are longer focal length instruments. And so it's very frustrating and difficult to get a good focus with the stock focuser. So, so why remove it? Why remove the, the feather touch if you have it? Well, it turns out that if you want a, a motorized system, I can think of at least two or three that you need the stock focuser in place to do that with. And so that's why if you're thinking about moving up to like Celestron's focusing motor, you need to, to get this off and you need to get the stock focuser back on there. And it's actually required with the 11 inch Rasa because some of them come with the, with the feather touch on there already. So if you want to use their focusing motor, you're going to have to take it off. So there are actually focusing motors for these feather touch focusers, but they just seem like they're a little bit up there in terms of price. They're more geared towards people that are doing like automated captures over the night that are that need the computer to be able to focus on their own. And so if you're just going to get one good focus and maybe adjust one one or two times during the night, to me it's not really worth the money that they that they charge for it. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at how to get this thing off there so you can get the the stock focuser on there so you can get a the Celestron motor on there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the big knob and you're gonna turn it all the way until it stops counterclockwise. That's gonna bring the mirror close to the back of the tube. Then you wanna remove the three screws holding it into place. After you get the three screws out of there, you're going to grab the large knob and pull it to the back gently so you can get to the brass bushing holding it there in place. I needed 13 millimeter wrench to hold mine. You may want to double check to make sure it's the same size. So you're going to unscrew the focuser and then you're going to take this screw out so that you can get the brass bushing. Now that you got that out of the way, you want to go ahead and get your either the, the retrofit kit or your original focuser with, with the black washer. I just screw it onto the thread. So you just screw that down just enough so that you can reattach the screw to the back. That will keep that thread from coming out too far when you're using the focuser. Once you got the screw attached, you just want to push the focuser so it's a, just about flush with the back of the tube so you can reattach the ring and in three screws. Now we're just going to get go right to adding the focus motor to your scope. And so the first thing you want to do is remove the three screws holding the ring there. So when you refer to the instructions, you'll see there's a couple different rings depending on your size and scope. So you pick the one that goes with your size scope and then you put the screws back one at a time you don't want to tighten one down be too tight before you get to the other ones otherwise it may be in the wrong place or it could bind or something like that and then you just kind of go around in a circle as you're tightening so next you want to make sure that indicator arrow is inside the range indicator just slide it over the focuser and tighten it down there. Once you've got that tightened, you put those screws in to hold it in place. You don't want to do it the other way around because it's actually a lot more likely to bind if you do that. And these screws don't need to be tight at all. They're just kind of holding it from falling. So now you power up your scope and you can just do a quick align so it doesn't ask you to line up any stars. 
you should now have a focuser item in your menu and then you go into calibrate in there that takes a couple of minutes and then you're all done 